I've been getting questions on EIA and more questions and more questions until then I decided to do another one more video on what is an EIA. And let me tell you what is an EIA. Just like the name suggests, an EIA, Environmental Impact Assessment. Okay, so what is that? It is going to be a study that is going to be done. It is a survey, okay, that is usually done to come up with the environmental impacts of a certain activity, of a certain project, or anything that you want to do of a project. Now, let me give you a real example so that probably you will understand, okay? And uh, why I am telling you this is because I'm an environmental expert who does environmental impact assessments every now and then for my clients. Like we said, these studies must be done by a qualified, certified environmental expert. So I do them every now and then. Let me give you an example, uh, a real time example. Let's say you want to do a petrol station. You want to establish a petrol station pale town ya pale kwenwe. So what do you need to do? One you need an environmental impact assessment. By law, this should be done before you do your project. So an EIA is usually done before, prior to the construction or implementation of the project. So the moment you have an idea, oh, by then I like a gas hapa, I like a petrol station hapa, I a jenga nyumba hapa, those are things that you need to do. Of course, you need the surveyors, the architects, the engineers, the contractors, the NCAs, NEMA is among them. Okay, and with NEMA, that is where the EIA comes in. So what you need to do is to get somebody like me to come to site and do a survey of the environment. So what do we do when we come to site? What we are going to look for is, okay, you want to get a petrol station. This is the capacity of your tanks. It is according, I'll see that this is according to the IPRA regulations. Is it tire one, tire two, tire three? All these things I'm going to consider that the law talks about okay i'm being guided by the law in this case to do the survey then i'm going to look at the impacts the effects that are going to come from the project during construction when you're constructing the petrol station when you finish constructing and now you're selling your petrol your diesel what are the impacts that are going to come from there the moment you are done with this project, you want to do with the petrol station, that's a happy vo, watakujenga, watakwanza kuchimba mawe, kwari, hapo hapo panyuruko meka petrol station. Then, after that, what are the impacts that are going to be as a result of whether you put your petrol station up, you demolish? So, you must understand the impacts of the survey that I'm doing, it is for now, tomorrow, and the future. What you're thinking now to do, you are in the planning phase, you are in the construction phase, operation as, as in the commissioning. Okay? So what I'll be looking at is this place was okay before we did the petrol station. I'll take the information that is called the baseline information. That is the status of the land before you do your project. The soil, the soil test, hapo, soil economagani, uh maji. Water, there's a water body, they had the other ground water, magic koaji, soil koaji, meeting the garden as you go around. How is the population around the area? That is the baseline, you know. He on the oh, when you look at the project, yako. and then now we, we are going to predict, we're going to, to think and figure out and research and see if you do your petrol station here. What impacts are likely to come from there? One of them is during construction, what do you want a job? Vijana want to a job, true? When you want to tanks, you want a job. When you want to a mafta, you want a job. Okay? When you want to mafta, your customer, hata kuwa kende a mafta three kilometers, they're getting it from there now. So you're reducing on the costs of them going for petrol at a, at a distance, right? Those are positive impacts, benefits. How about the, the, the disadvantages? I remember I told you we are looking at uh, during construction, ukijenga, 
ukioperate petrol station yako na ile time yenye you will be demolishing your petrol station uh, the negative impacts for example in case of accident when you are constructing people could get hurt true when you're constructing if there are trees on site you have to do away with them we are all about the environment here so you're going to do away with the trees okay you are going to do away with the grass the the vegetation that was already on site you're going to say yes utapanda maua utapanda grass after lakini in the meantime umetoa maybe there were ants that were living in that area okay the other thing is the people who are living around your neighbor are they comfortable sitting or sleeping next to a petrol station and we know the way they are usually it is it is high volatile we can be a fire anytime an accident in case of an accident you know how much damage would there be then because now petrol station is just here vehicles and cars and uh, and uh, lorries and you know border borders that was kikujia mafuta so there is going to be every time kuna mafuta inakujua so there is always traffic so kutakuwa na jam hiyo center probably right mafuta zikikuja kuja mafuta probably kuna shop ya naiba hapo hivyo yenye zitakuwa zikisimama hapo hivyo because kuna jam zikiingia so you are blocking that, that person's shop with the big lorries and cars just an example you know that what is coming to mind right now okay then the other thing is the the, the, the uh, assuming there is a leakage and the groundwater is polluted how much harm could occur okay so you weigh the positive the benefits you weigh the negatives the disadvantages and see so what nema is going to do is to see are the negatives more than the positives and if they are more then that project is not really necessary or are the benefits more than the negatives then sure you are clear to go ahead or the negatives could be more or less but there are ways you can be able to reduce their impacts okay like risk of accident in a petrol station can be reduced true there are measures there are action practices you can put in place to ensure that the accident is the last thing that is going to happen you can put in measures and practices to ensure there is no leakage that is going to come from that petrol station you can put in measures and, and uh, practices to make sure that the waste that comes from that petrol station that is the water that is mixed with oil and grease and all this does not affect the other drainages for example the sewer the sewer the sewer system or the sewer drainage system right there are things you can be able to do okay you, there are things you can be able to do to reduce the amount of water that you use from the water provider there are things that you can do to reduce the amount of energy you use from the national grid those are called mitigation measures so during the eia we identify the positive impacts the negative impacts and the measures that are going to put in place to ensure that the negative impacts are reduced as much as possible so that in the overall uh after everything is in put is in place the benefits are going to be more as compared to them the positives are so that in the overall the benefits are going to be more as compared to the negatives so that is all there is in an environmental impact assessment those are the major things of course there are other things that you're going to look at but those are the major things that is the general aim of an environmental impact assessment so after we have established all these things we come up with a plan of how you're going to manage the environment your waste how you're going to make to manage waste from your petrol station of course they are waste 
How are you going to manage your water waste? The waste that is mixed up with oil because probably you have a service bay in your petrol station. So the waste, when you wash your service bay, that water contains oil. How are you managing that? How are you managing electricity? How are you managing the waters that you, you're using the, in the petrol station? So now we come up with a plan that is going to show you how you're supposed to do this now in the right way. Okay? And after we have done that, we also check and advise. In the report, there is a whole chapter that is dedicated, that is according to my plan, that is dedicated to informing you of all the laws and the regulations that affect your business. So remember, it's not all about the environmental regulation or the environmental law. There is the public health. There is the physical planning. For example, that land was agricultural. Have you changed the use to commercial? There is the there are so many other laws that are going to take part. And then this report is done, written down and taken to NEMA. We are now NEMA will review it. In of course, in addition to so many other things that we're going to do, I'll take you through the whole process of an EIA soon very soon in this video in this channel so make sure to subscribe hit the like button because good things are coming so we have done a report taken to NEMA and within a period of time they have time to review to consult with the other government agencies and see if your project is fit to go on and if it is you're given a license and this license comes with conditions all right so to cut to so to finish up, there are things about five. I don't know if you have identified the five things that I've been talking about. The first thing is to come and see how your site looks like. The soil, we do the soil test, the water test, the neighborhood, how is the neighborhood, the trees that we are there. Maybe kulikuwa na mutarakwa, mutero, mugumo, mo... Yeah, those ones. Then maybe how was how was the population around all the settlement? Okay, the baseline information before Jeng. And then now we come up with the negative impacts and the positive impacts. Then we come up with mitigation measures for the negative impacts. Okay, those are how many things? Three. Baseline information, impact identification, mitigation measures, environmental management plan. And finally, we're looking at the laws and regulations, policies that govern your project or that could be in relation to your project. And finally, a report is done where it is taken to the government offices, that is NEMA, for approval. Okay? And there is a very important part of the EIA that we can only talk in another video that is called public participation. We are going to do a video after this. Make sure to follow it up. Subscribe to my channel so that you can see that video on public participation in EIA. But I already did an introduction on a previous video of the EIA of the public participation. Check this video that I'm going to link up here. Also, make sure to check these two videos that I'm going to link up here. And I'm sure you're going to like them. And uh, till next time, subscribe to my channel. Bye-bye.